I would like to thank the elders for the opportunity to preach tonight. For those of you who may be visiting, you are our honored guest, and we would like to invite you back at any of our services. For my sermon topic, I have chosen the title, Facing Your Giants. We all know the story of David and Goliath, how God, is, God used a very young man full of faith to face a huge hawk of a human for God and his people Israel. With sling in hand he with sling in hand he chose five smooth, smooth stones from a brook and yelled charge as he ran into the valley of certain death. God guided his actions in the stone right between the eyes of the giant who fell flat. Then David proved he knew how to get ahead. David is not the only person to come up against a giant. All believers will find themselves face to face with big challenges, and quite often. But on a few rare occasions, you will find yourself staring into the eyes of a Goliath. Then either fear or fear takes over. Most often it is fear and, and expectation that we are about to be squashed. Notice the, Phil the Philistines had invaded the ter the Israelite territory, verse 1 of chapter 17 says, That which belonged to Judah, Goliath stood and defied the army of God. And they are huddled together, frightened, and did not attempt to do anything to eliminate him. Satan stands before many local churches today and, de and defies the living Savior and his church. And many people are, for the most part, huddled down, too frightened to do anything about it. Some people hopelessly looks on while a congregation may dwindle in numbers and fade away. Goliath stands waving his spear high in the air, challenging someone to defend the name of God. And the church seems indifferent against such a belligerent foe. Paul says in Ephesians 6 to 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy is all around us today. We are faced with lies from every angle. We have been given weapons and ammo that will kill any giant that stands before us. Thus we must use that God, what God has given us. In verse 40, the Bible says, David reached down into the brook, picked up five smooth stones, and then proceeded to kill the giant. The time may come in our lives when we may be faced with our own giants. Tonight, in a few short minutes that I have, I would like to discuss with, with you two possible giants that we might have to conquer in our lives. As we have seen in our text, David believed that victory could be won and did not fear Goliath because of, this, because of his size. As Christians, we should not fear the size of the giant's problems, but put our trust in God to supply our victory. The first giant that we might face in our lives is our past. Perhaps many of you have a past that is difficult to overcome. If so, consider the following story. In the early 1970s, the Carpenters dominated the pop music charts with top 10 songs like We've Only Just Begun, Rainy Days and Mondays, Top of the World, and their mega hit Close to You. Karen and her brother Richard produced an amazing 14 gold records. In the process, they also won an Oscar and three Grammy Awards. Blessed, blessed with the voice as pretty as sunshine, Karen Carpenter could have dominated the music scene for years to come. Yet behind the bright lights of popularity, <clears throat> a dark enemy loomed. Karen Carpenter was starving herself to death because of the eating disorder called anorexia. Though she became a music superstar, Karen could not shake her uh, adolescent and childhood insecurities. The coroner's reports say that Karen died of a heart attack brought on by anorexia, but Karen, Karen Carpenter died in part because she was unable to make peace with her past. Like Karen, we all have a past, a past which we can neither escape nor change. The entire field of psychology is based on the premise that the past affects our present life. It, 
If true, it is important that we learn how to conquer our past. Joseph, son of Jacob, ever overcame a painful past. He was raised in what we would call a dysfunctional family. Sibling, sibling rivalry filled Jacob's household. Favoritism abounded. Hatred was a regular dish served on the family menu. One day, Joseph's brothers caught him, threw him into a pit, and discussed killing him. One brother intervened and convinced the rest instead to sell Joseph as a slave traders headed to Egypt. In Egypt, Joseph became the proper property of a man named Potiphar. Potiphar's wife had, the, had eyes for Joseph, though, and made advances toward him. Frustrated by Joseph's refusal, the falsely tra charged him with tempted rape. Attempted rape, and he was in prison. While in prison, Joseph made friends with a baker and a cupbearer. Each promised to pull their political strings to get Joseph released, if and when they were free. In time, the baker was hanged. The cupbearer was freed, but suffered a case of amnesia when it came to Joseph. For two more years, Joseph, Joseph's mailing address was in Egyptian prison. Perhaps many have had a disturbing or less than happy past, but this is something that the Bible teaches that we cannot, we can't, we can't overcome. Consider 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Now ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but not deceive neither fornicators nor adulterers, nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of, the, of our God. The second possible giant that we may have to conquer is fear. Fear binds multitude, multitudes of Christians today. Paul said in 2 Timothy 1, 1 7, for God has not given us spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of sound mind. Paul gave the scripture to Timothy right in the midst of telling him to stir up his spiritual gifts to testify of Jesus Christ and to share with Paul in the sufferings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fear is a substance of things we hope won't happen. It's almost like a conviction that they will, they will happen. Fear is faith in reverse, but it, is, but it is faith in the devil. Whether we know it or not, God wants Christians to be free of such fear. There is fear which is good and clean. There, which is fear of the Lord. Many blessings are associated with the healthy fear of the Lord. We are not talking about the kind of fear here. Neither are we talking about the naturally healthy fear which would affect us. If, for example, we were to complete, contemplate jumping off a cliff or walking into heavy speeding traffic. Someone said, do the thing you fear most and the death of fear is certain. This is good advice when it comes to things like public speaking. If we are afraid of that or talking to strangers about Jesus, in no case should we bow to fear. But this kind of advice is not enough. What we actually need is the actual consciousness that God is with us and around us, over and over us. And we need to know who God is. God is greater than the devil. There is no comparison. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 11, 13, 5. If we are aware of the presence of Jesus with us, we really can't be swallowed up or dom dominated by fear. Fear cannot control us. Ultimately, it, it is to be driven out in all its forms. Perhaps the fear of death is the giant that we must conquer in our lives. The Hebrew writer once told the story of those who were so afraid to die that they lived their lives in a constant prison. Hebrews 2, 14, and 15. The Bible teaches that Jesus is our Savior and King conquered death that we no longer have to fear the unknown. 
It has been said that death is the door that we must pass through to be with our Savior. Are you prepared to pass through the door? Have you been baptized in Jesus in Christ Jesus for the remission of your sins? In just a few moments, Chase is going to offer the invitation, and I would encourage you to commit your life to Jesus Christ and allow him to help you conquer all of the giants that you might face in this life. Thank you.